All right, guys, we're uh, back to working on the van today. Uh, we got a bunch of different things that are going to happen. Um, we're going to set up our uh, grounding um, wire that's going to ground the electrical system. Um, it's a wire I already had uh, in from another project, so we're going to go ahead and utilize that. Um, we'll go over uh, what we did with the electrical system itself. I made some changes since the last video because I didn't kind of I didn't like how things were kind of laid out, and I had a few days to think about it, so I decided to change some stuff up. Um, you'll see that we got our Havelock wool in the back, so. We're in the process of insulating. So we finished all of the van walls um, and we're going through the process of insulating. So I'll show you that. Um, we also, in the last video, talked about the fridge and how we had built a uh, bench for the fridge to sit in with a top to lift it up. And I didn't like that. Uh, so we ended up uh, making a slide uh, for the fridge. So we'll show you that too. And uh, I think uh, that'll get it. I think we gotta try and do, maybe add, build in the window boxes to finish out every of uh, the van framing um, for the inside. And then I got some quarter inch paneling that we're gonna stick in the garage area that we may cut out today too. So we'll just kind of see where we get to. All right, so quick update. Um, we have a lot of the insulation in up top. All the final wire runs are done. We got some insulation down in the bottom uh, for most of the this part of the van. Now we've run into a slight issue. So if you put the insulation in, it wants to come out on the underneath side. So what we've done. Is I took a piece of one inch by two and a half inch stock. And we're gonna create a little shelf just like that so that it keeps the insulation from falling down. All right, quick, easy fix. And that way that it won't fall down um, through that. And once the wall boards up, it'll hold all that in place. So after some thinking, um, this, uh, I don't think this bench is going to work the way that I wanted it to. I think lifting the lid up and down is going to be too much of a pain. So what we're going to end up doing is making this slide this way from underneath. Let's call the fridge 38 inches long by uh, 21 inches wide. So what I ended up doing is I got some 22 inch uh, slides that are two, rated for 250 pounds. And so the first step we got to do is make a tray for the um, fridge to sit in. So we're going to take a piece of three quarter inch plywood and make the bottom. And then we're going to take uh, some uh, <clears throat> three quarter by four boards and make the sides. And uh, we'll put all that together. All right, so first we're gonna mark out uh, a base plate, which is gonna be um, 21 inches by 36 and a half. So 
All right, so that's the basic premise. We'll uh, drill the holes, glue it, and put it together real fast. All right, so we got the tray built for the slide. So we did make it a big on this side because the plugs have to stick out of it. So we had to leave a little bit of room to be able to have the plugs in there for the DC and the AC side. But I'm happy with it. All right, so we changed this uh, from the bench to a slide out we got a pair of 250 pound slides and now much better all right so that was uh um an all-day event we uh you know first set up the um so it was a bench with a lid and we just felt like over time that that, that lid would be difficult to manage day in and day out. So uh, we, I got to thinking and we went to a redesign of um, putting things together uh, so that the, the fridge actually slides in and out of the van, of the seat itself. That way the seat cushion is always where it is and uh, the fridge is easy to access uh, no matter where you are, what you're doing. And like I said, we picked up a couple of 250 pound uh, heavy duty slides um, and it pulls right out, opens all the way up and I, I think it's going to be good. So we just got to come up with a top uh, for it and, um, and then have a cushion made. And so now we'll get to work on uh, building out the rest of the, uh, um, I guess the main cabinet. We're going to have like a pull out spice rack with like a shelf right next to it. It'll have like a charging port and stuff like that. And then, of course, the kitchen on the other side. So progress a little bit at a time. Part of the, the beauty of doing this a little slow is that uh, we have the ability to think about it and then make changes um, when uh, changes are needed. So I think this was a good one. Let's keep going. All right. So for the components of the system, 2 watt ground wire. Uh, we have a star washer, um, a wash, two flat washers, a lock washer, and then we adding a nylon nut bolt. So this is just a 5 16 bolt. On the back of our sprinter, um, we have uh, on the body panel itself, there's already a 5 16 hole, so we're just going to use that. And then that's going to run out with the rest of our electrical system, and it will ground to one of the Lynx distributors, which will ground the entire electrical system to the, uh, the body of the vehicle. So the first step is we're just gonna sand the top coat of paint. Now, that's just gonna get down to the primer, the star washer, if it will focus, we'll cut through the paint and make the connection uh, for the ground wire. All right, so like you guys, like I've talked about before, we use this um, expandable sleeving. And I cover all my wires with this just because it's just an extra added layer of protection. And to get it on, basically you have to push it down so it expands and then push it down the wire. Push it down until it expands and push it down the wire. And so on. And until it's covered. 
go ahead and cut the end. And then push it down and one last time. And then all I do is I just take some electrical tape. And just wrap the edge. This will be the end that comes out toward the inverter. So, or toward the... Uh, the Lynx uh, distributor. So the way this all goes together is I'm adding an extra lock washer just for um, security sake because I don't ever want this to come loose. So it's lock wash, 516 bolt, lock washer, regular washer. We get the lug, then the star washer, the serrated washer. That'll go into the panel. And then on the back side, you have a regular washer and then your, your lock nut. And this just uses a half inch socket and a half inch wrench. That's really tight. Now we're just going to route this. To come out with the rest of our wires. So we routed that so it'll come out with the rest of all of our wires down here into the electrical compartment. Now the, the select the place I picked was just because it was easy to get to. Um, you can select any part of the van as long as it's tied to the body structure and you use some method of cutting uh, through the paint to get to the actual metal uh, so that you have a good connection. There are really two methods to do it. You can sand it all the way down to bare metal so that you have a positive contact between the lug and the body or you can use a serrated washer which once you tighten it down will actually cut through the metal um, and then the, your connection is made there. So that's just the, the method we chose to take on this. Like I said, you can pick any location close to where your electrical compartment is going to be. It's a pretty simple thing and uh, works pretty well. All right, so you can see uh, we got um, insulation put in and then all of our wires are all terminated out of this one space. So this is going to be our electrical compartment and I think previously we had talked about that we were going to have a, a DC um, distribution panel up here. And then on the other side of the van, we were going to put a DC distribution panel here and we changed that. So the other distribution panel is going to be mounted down here in the uh, garage on the passenger side rear. So all of the other DC circuits that'll power um, everything on the right side of the van is gonna come from right here. So we have exterior lights right there and right there. And then the two uh, scene lights in the back. And originally um, I thought we were gonna be able to, we were gonna power those lights uh, from some switches that would go on the um, kitchen island right here. And then I thought to myself, we'd do much better with a switch control um, or a panel of switches up front uh, that we could control. So when we're like, if we have to back into a scene that I could flip on the, the lights from the driver's seat um, and everything, I can control them from up there. And so 
we're going to run um, a switch uh, panel um, up into the headliner. Uh, they'll have the uh, these outside scene lights on, and I think that's going to work out better. So with, with moving those things, it was simple enough to just move this um, DC distribution, the second DC distribution panel to the back, and we'll pull a second circuit off of the Lynx distributor setup that we have to power that one, as well as to power uh, the one up front. So you guys can see how I've been pulling wire. I got to pull two more circuits and they are for the dimmer switches for the ceiling lights. So in a sprinter van, there's a channel that runs um, down the pillars. So from here down, you can see the wire here in the chase and this goes around the window opening. And I have it pulled out here. And what we'll do is we'll attach this to the wire itself and pull it back through. All right, so I've just taken the, the fiberglass fish tape, put it between the two wires, taped it in a couple places uh, so that we can pull it uh, straight up through. All right, and then we just pull the tape up and you just gotta help it. All right. Once they come up through the hole, you just pull it through. And then, we'll just feed them where we need them to go. Now in this case, we've got uh, two different feeds. We have the main power wire that's gonna come across from the junction block. And so we'll feed this over through our makeshift wire loom real quick. And then where our wires come out. Now, always make sure that when you do this kind of stuff, that you label the wires on both ends uh, that way you know um, what goes where so that when you're terminating it over here, everything's labeled. And then because you can't trace that wire um, back through the system, you got to have it labeled on the other end too. All right, so one of the last things that we needed to do was uh, make the window box for this. And I uh, templated the first one. Um, I screwed up the first time because I can't measure right and I cut the blocks way too small because I thought it was going to be an inside fit. But the way this works is these are 34 inches long and these are 12 and a quarter inches tall. And because of how the window I have uh, set, we have interference with this radius right here with the box sitting flush. So I had to kind of grind out that edge uh, so it fits nice and tight. I'll show you how it fits up in there. All right, so this just sits right on the edge of the window frame itself. So you can see it fits nice and tight and then you can see where we had to cut out and that makes a nice fit along the body line. So what we'll do is we'll make a, a couple pieces that will run uh, beside the frame and then we'll use some pocket holes to screw it in to give it some structure. Uh, so we'll do that now. So these are the uh, pieces that go on either side of the window box and we're going to do some uh, pocket holes real quick. We're going to do two vertical ones on each side and then we're going to do three um horizontal ones for the, the box itself so it's really simple you make jigs but this is just quick and easy to do
All right, it's just that quick. So uh, let's go get them installed. Uh, there's not a whole lot to this. Same process that we did over there. We'll get this set up against the That's not going anywhere. So uh, we'll basically do the same thing for the other side and uh, we should be good to go. All right, we're just doing the same side, and same thing on this side. And that, that pretty much does that. I think that's going to wrap us up for tonight. It's getting late. And uh, I think that's going to be it. So that was the install of the window boxes. Um, so that went uh, pretty smoothly. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So uh, just to recap what we've done uh, today, we uh, put in the ground cable for the chassis ground for uh, the power system. And um, we... I showed you how we routed a couple of those wires up through one of the interior chases to hide the wires. We redid the bench into a fridge slide, which I'm really happy with. Just gotta figure out a top to the bench. Um, put some insulation up, and then those finished the window boxes. So uh, all in all, a pretty good uh, day for today, or the couple days that we kind of put all this together. So. Hope you guys got something from the video. Um, we're continuing to make progress a little bit at a time. And um, I'll leave a link in the description below for all the stuff that we've used. We do have an Amazon affiliate account. So if you're interested in buying some of the stuff, consider using the links. It doesn't cost you anything, it helps us out. So anyway, um, like I said, hope you guys got something from the video. If you do, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, uh, let your friends know about it. We really appreciate it, it just helps us out that much more and uh we'll see you next time